In today's video, I'm going to do a quick tutorial on how to set up your Windows-based Plex Media Server to use RAM for transcoding. What's up YouTube, Jason here with Bite My Bits. And like I said, today is an actual tutorial about RAM transcoding. Now I know I talked about RAM transcoding in a previous video, but it actually wasn't much of a walkthrough, it was more of like a discovery process for me. Also that was for Unraid and this is for Windows. So hey, new. But anyways, I'm dedicating this specifically to Windows for two reasons. Number one, each operating system is gonna be different. So you're gonna need different software in order to do this or different commands or whatever. So this is gonna be specific for Windows. Number two, this is pretty much brought up because an old buddy of mine reached out with a little bit of a problem that he was trying to work out and the end of conclusion was setting up RAM transcoding. To give you the long story short, he has his own Twitch channel. He likes to play video games and stream that live. He likes to use one computer for not only the Twitch transcoding, but also as his Plex media server. And during this conversation, we did talk a little bit about an SSD going bad, which really kind of brings a point to this video of using RAM to transcode with Plex is gonna be a lot better for your SSDs. And in the end, hopefully allow them to last longer. Now, just in case you are intrigued by this Twitch gamer buddy of mine, his name is B Savage with a three instead of an E. But whatever you do, don't go to his Twitch channel because all he does is play video games. He does no tech videos and video games are boring and I wish I could play them more. But anyways, on to the tutorial. To start things off, you need a software in order to set up a RAM disk on your Windows machine. Now, I actually gave him the recommendation of the word RAM disk. I was like, if you just Google this, it'll probably bring up some like Softpedia or whatever it was. I couldn't remember exactly. The point is, is that the program that I was talking about actually is not free. So I decided to find a solution that was actually free to use. So through some very basic searching, I did find a program that was not only lightweight, but it would launch at startup and it did not have any kind of limitations as far as how large your RAM disk can be. Assuming, of course, you have the RAM to do it. Oh yeah, side note, if you have like four gigs of RAM in your you know, server, this is not gonna help you at all. In my test server, I actually have 16 gigs of RAM, so I made a RAM disk that was 10 gigabytes. I feel this is gonna be plenty for you know one, two, four, five streams, something like that. But if you don't have enough RAM in your system, chances are this might not work very well for you. But hey, you can try. So the software I found was IMDisk Toolkit. That's I-M-D-I-S-K Toolkit. Very lightweight and super easy to use. All you have to do is download it from this website, launch it from your program files, go to the configuration option. This will load up a window. You type in how large you want your RAM disk, make sure it's set to launch at startup. I think I pretty much ignored most of the other settings because that got me up and running. And once you get everything set up and you hit okay, it'll just pop up the properties for your new drive. Just in case you didn't select what drive letter you want it to be, you wanna take note of what the drive letter is. Now that you have the software installed, you have it configured, you got your new RAM disk, now all you have to do is go into Plex. So you launch up your Plex media server web interface, go up to your server settings. Over here on the left-hand side, click on transcoder and look for the transcoding directory. Now, if you haven't customized this before, it will be blank. If you have customized this before and you've pointed it to an SSD, you'll have to change it. So all you do is you change it to the new drive letter that you created specifically for this transcoding. You click apply and boom, Bob's your uncle. Now to test this out, I did go ahead and launch a test media file. Of course, Back to the Future because it's the most amazing movie in the world and I watch it all the time. Maybe, okay, once a month, but still. I set that thing to transcode. I went into my server, I watched it, I looked at it, it says everything is converting. Boom, good to go on that side. And then all I had to do was go into the new drive loader that was created and check out the folders and see if anything was created. And of course, everything is showing up as using that drive now as a transcoding directory. So that gives you your answer on how to set Plex up for a temporary transcoding directory to your RAM only. But if you wanna know some of the benefits, well, let's take a second just to talk about that. As I mentioned before, yes, it will save a little bit of life on your SSD. I know from experience that, you know, using an SSD as a transcode folder can ruin it. But aside from that, depending on what your setup was before, this could also increase the speed of you launching a movie file or moving forward or backwards in a movie file, maybe changing to subtitles or without subtitles, etc. Overall, this is gonna be a better experience when you're needing to use a transcoding directory in order to temporarily store media files. You might not notice it all the time, but when it does come into play, it could be very beneficial. Well, that's it for today, guys. Hopefully this is a very short and to the point video and hopefully it will help somebody out 
out there. If you have any questions or anything, feel free to comment below, like, and subscribe if you like what I do. And as always, have a good night.